I think growing up, I was thinking a lot about, oh, I want to sound like her or I want to sound like her. But uh, the older I get, I have found like kind of my voice in a way or how it feels good to sing in my voice. I think naturally I have my own tone, but I've definitely been like, <laughs> I'm going to try to sound like Beyonce right now. Or like, I'm going to try to sound like Celine. Absolutely, I have done that. But I think it does sound the best when you find your own like register and where it feels good to really belt. Hi, I'm Zara Larson, and these are my top five musical influences. My first musical influence is Beyonce. I don't think this is a surprise to anyone who knows anything about me. I just, and I know I'm not alone, I just think she's the most, you know what, at this point, it's not even like subjectively, she is the best performer of our generation, I would argue, ever. I'm so lucky to be alive at this time and that I have gotten to see her live, you know, watch her perform. She is just incredible, an incredible performer. Like she can sing, she can write, she can produce, she can dance. She's such a boss and she's so in control over all of her work. I have just loved her since the minute I discovered her and I don't really know when it was. It was like all of a sudden she was in my life and a very big part of my life. I think everything that I do, honestly, in my, in my, when I do sing live, when I'm in the studio, I'm like, you know, when I'm tired, I'm like, Beyonce will go, she will go one more time. The work ethic that you have to put in to make something good, because honestly, nobody just shows up to stage and look like that. Like that is hours on top of hours on top of hours that you have to put in to make stuff come out that well. So she inspires me to really, really work hard for what you want. And there are so many details that you need to think about. And things take longer than you would think they, they take. And you just have to be present for all of those things. And I think the older I get, the more in control I wanna be. So just working hard is the number one because you, you can have talent, but then it's the work you put in. Another musical influence of mine is Whitney Houston. I remember when I got her like double CD, like her greatest hits. And it was such a beautiful cover. It was shot by David LaChapelle. My mom brought it home for me. And I've heard her songs before. I've watched The Bodyguard and I think that's what really made me like, oh my God, she's amazing. She's the voice, like she's the voice. She is the voice. What else can I say? In my opinion, just untouched. Like nobody can come close to her tone. <sighs> She's just born with that. I love big voices. So she's, you know, she's the voice for me. When I was on Sweden's Got Talent, when I was 10, I was performing two of the songs, two of the three songs, and two of them were Whitney Houston songs because that was just all I was listening to. Number three for me is Celine Dion. She is just, oh, woo! And she was my first concert that I ever been to. Also a voice. She doesn't really have dancers like that. She doesn't really have that. And I'm quite like a show girl. So I remember telling my mom like, I don't know how this show will be like, and I was super young too. And then we sat down in the arena close to my home and I was just blown away the whole concert. And you know, speaking of the talent show, she was the third song that I did of the three. So my heart will go on. I saw a tweet saying like, so sad about Titanic, but like, it did give us my heart will go on. So <laughs> maybe it was worth it. <laughs> Just her tone too is such a recognizable voice. And she can sing kind of any genre. And she's funny, she's charming. She is putting on a show in a different way. It was just the best first concert I could possibly have been to. My fourth one is Christina Aguilera. Boom, 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 another voice. <laughs> I remember seeing her dirty video. It was a done deal. It was a done deal for me and she could also really sing. And she has this like depth in her voice, which I really love. I also love that she did very fun songs. I feel like, you know, look-wise as me, you know, a little girl, I really felt like 
she's me. Like, you know, I'm like, that's me. <laughs> when I got the um, Back to Basics, I think that was my first uh, album of hers that I bought. I could just really relate to her. I thought she was sexy. I thought she was cool. I thought she had beautiful, beautiful songs. Me and my mom, we used to watch, we're very emotional, and we used to watch the music video for Hurt. And we would just cry. <laughs> We were like, should we watch Hurt? And then we would put it on and we would just cry and we would sob. So we did that a lot. <laughs> My last musical influence, but not least, is the Swedish artist. She's a legend here in Sweden. Her name is Keruola. I think I really just related to her being super young because she sings in Swedish and she was my first first big idol it was kind of like a full circle moment when I got to do like two years ago I got to remake one of her absolute best songs that she she's ever done I got to remake it with her because I wanted to invite her on a tv show here in Sweden and I was like can we sing the song together and then people were like release 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 so we released it and it was like super popular here. And I just felt like, wow, like I am making a song, my, my favorite song with my favorite artist growing up. And now we're doing this together. It was such a beautiful moment. She's a, a pop icon here in Sweden. And she's a Eurovision queen. And she was just really my first kind of gateway into these beautiful female voices. This new era of my music would be honestly a continuation, I think, on what I've been putting out before. I think it'll be a lot more highs and lows. The super highs will be really energetic, super fun, like we will have club bangers, just a little sassy in there. And then the lows, which isn't like low in quality, but just like in mood maybe, and in emotions and in heartfeltness. I think Can Tamer is the perfect start for the new album and the new year because it's just so energetic. It does have a familiar sound. It's a little cheeky cheeky. It's a little nod to the 80s uh, and nod to that retro like sound. But I just love the vibe and the feeling I get when I listen to the songs. When I wrote this song, I remember we finished it in a day. And then after we were done, I was just like, play it again, play it again, play it again, play it again. It was just something that I couldn't stop listening to and it made me so happy. That's how I want to feel for the rest of the year. I'm gonna just keep surprising people with the, with the next couple of drops. I don't think it really represents exactly sonically the rest of the album but the truth is i don't think any song does so it's all like hey 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 which i'm so excited about really really but i feel like it, it made me it made me happy it made me feel confident i feel fun and confident and free when i when i sing it and when i listen to it going into my third international album i feel like maybe i'm a bit more confident not only as an artist but like as a person i'm a bit more stable like in life like in my opinions who i am what i like what i don't like and i think all of that affects how i am moving in different situations and even how i take a room when I write the songs um, and how I like to express myself because I feel like maybe in the beginning when I started writing and like doing music I was a bit more shy and didn't feel like my confidence in, in writing was there and the more you do it the better you get it's like a constant development so I do feel like this is going to be my best album so far for sure I think this year I'm just really going to believe in myself and I'm so tired of like oh like can I do this can I do this yes I can and everybody who wants to you really can like you really really can it's all about having grit I really believe in that. So I have a long way to go um, to reach to the point where I feel like I've done this now. Maybe I won't ever feel that. I think that is like the blessing and the curse. Never being truly satisfied is that you, you get really far, but will I ever be satisfied? We'll see. Uh, but I have so much to do and so many things to experience and conquer. <laughs>